When it comes to investing, there are many different styles. So for today's video, I created a pyramid of investing to describe seven levels of investors. Most of us stop at one level or another in life without ever reaching the top, or even fall down from one level to a lower one. But no matter which investor you are, or you're no investor at all, we should all aspire to get to the top, or at least know all the levels, because your potential net worth is directly related to where you are on the pyramid. I don't know if you know what that means. Well, I do. What does it mean? It means that if you want to find out what I know or tell me what you know, then don't interview me. You do your own stupid show. Now, that was Robert Kiyosaki, the mad version. Kiyosaki also describes seven levels of investors in his book, The Cash Flow Quadrant. So I'm gonna do a similar thing, but instead of talking about financial freedom, in my pyramid, we're gonna focus on real investing types. So without further ado, since rule number one of a YouTube video is keep your introduction short, maybe you're not doing it right. Let's go right to the first level of the pyramid, which is the squanderer. The squanderer is the only stage of the pyramid that doesn't involve in actual investing. So I'm gonna be quick about it. Squanderers are people with zero knowledge of investing, but they know very well how to use a credit card and love to. So no money to invest, not even the slightest idea of saving money for the future, and basically go by the principle, this month's salary is this month's expense. There are many ways to identify squanderers, but probably the easiest way for you to recognize them is when you use statements like, life is too short for just one purse, or I want that car no matter what, or live today as it's your last day, buy as if you were the richest in town. Which by the way was ironically inspired by Gandhi's quote, live as if you were to die tomorrow, learn as if you were to live forever. Gandhi's version sounds much better by the way. I'd Say that at least 50% of the population in developed countries fall under this level. Is that all it is? Please let me know if you think it's even more than this. But important to remark is that not all people who fall under this category are low income earners. Remember, we're not making a list based on income, but on net worth. In fact, there are many, many rich people who would also fall under this category, and even if they make tons of money every month, they have a low net worth because they squander it, like the name says. All right, level two is the safe saver. The safe saver understood that maybe it's not worth it squandering all your money every month like there's no tomorrow, because usually there is going to be a tomorrow, but they still haven't done the step of trying to educate themselves a little on investing and on the stock market. This is too complicated for any of us to understand. Instead, they do two things. They save money and sometimes they put it into something really safe and simple like a savings account. This level is surely a huge step forward compared to the first one, because at this stage you are finally increasing your net worth over time instead of drowning into that. Still, saving money and getting a couple of percent from a savings account or long-term bonds is not gonna make you wealthy. It's totally okay to do it with an emergency fund, say between three and nine months worth of expenses, but for the rest, you're really going to compensate for inflation. I would say that a good 20% falls under this category and older generations usually rank here. My parents, for example, are savers. And there is a pretty good chance that yours are too, as they grew up with a scarcity mentality. That's why if you want one day to stop working hard for your money, but instead have your money working hard for you, you need to go higher on the pyramid. Level three is the gambler, which I would say covers 15% of people. This level means pain, sweat, and blood. It's the most painful of all because except in some rare cases like Baby Buffett or Baby Dalio, we all have to go through this phase and make tons of stupid gambles that we like to call wrong decisions just to feel less responsible. If you think you've never been in this category, I strongly suggest you review your past or maybe even your present because if you believe so, you might still be a gambler. And if after that you're still sure that you have never been a gambler, well, congratulations because you saved yourself from the most painful level. Gamblers don't actually mean to do anything bad, but they gamble with their investments because either they don't know much about investing or they are too much in a rush of getting rich or both. I include in this category people that invest in the stock market and buy stocks without having any idea about the financials behind the stock or that buy a stock because they've read it somewhere that it's a hot pick. Because believe it or not, that is a gamble. I also include every human on earth that invested in NFTs, except influencers. Because influencers knew they could make money scamming their audience. Let's also put into the mix everyone that invests in unknown cryptocurrencies like Dodge Elon Mars, Safe Moon, or Baby Dodge, as well as people that do day trading, copy trading, margin trading, and everything that ends with trading and is advertised by kids on TikTok. And making $8,500 per month is not that difficult. A few moments later. I'm also including here all people that don't subscribe to my channel because come on there is no better investment than a free investment am i right and as opposed to bonds and cds you can actually unsubscribe whenever you want and you don't have to pay any fees really what's the scam no scam level four is the active amateur and notice here most people i know that call themselves investors 
actually fall under this level. The active amateur understood that investing cannot be just a gamble. He knows that there is some kind of research behind it, but still hasn't built any good knowledge about how to choose stocks or index funds. As a result, he's gonna make tons of bad decisions and to avoid a panic attack or worse, a heart attack, he's gonna find himself selling positions at a loss many, many times making him a short-term investor, even if he didn't want to. So I'm counting here not only people that decide they wanna buy and sell regularly in the short term, which I believe is always a poor choice, but also people that are forced to sell often because of wrong decisions. I would say that roughly 10% of people may fall under this category. And despite the fact that the active amateur investor makes mistake after mistake and usually loses tons of money, this is the first level that actually puts you in a position of finally being able to become wealthy. For the same reason why, if you want to become a basketball champion, the first thing you need to do is to start training seriously. And let's say it, you're definitely gonna suck at the beginning. But at least you broke the ice. At least you decided that you don't want investing to be scary anymore and you finally entered the realm of endless possibilities. Level five is the passive index investor. And it's okay for most people, even as a final goal. I'm sure a good deal of my viewers fall into this level. So if you are, don't forget to leave a comment so that we know how many people here are actually long-term ETF or index fund investors. Now, this level represents people that invest in ETFs and index funds and they do it passively, meaning they tendentially buy and hold for the long term. They usually have clear financial goals and they don't get fancy or waste money on luxury vehicles. Interesting fact is that most millionaires in America and also in the world are coming from this level. They invest a percentage of their income every month, at least 10, 15%, and they never sell. Never sell, never ever sell. But let's not panic here. You are allowed to sell sometimes, and of course, you're also allowed to make mistakes, which would mean that you slip into a lower level of investing for a moment and get back up. But if you start selling more often than not, or own losing positions more often than not, you're probably still on level three or four. Now, passive index investors understand the power of index diversification and know that in the long term, the probability of making a decent net worth by trying to beat the market is statistically lower than by tracking the market itself. It's ironic, but they somehow understood that average is better than average. Sorry, what did you say? Yeah, like follow the average, follow the market, and you'll achieve above average results. So people on level five understood the power of long-term compounding and the importance of avoiding high fees by using index funds and ETFs that are passively managed. Because investing in the whole market is not truly a zero-sum game. Investors are gonna have a return that is equal to the investments less the fee that you pay. And since you can't avoid fees when investing in funds, what you should focus on is at least avoiding high fees, like the one of actively managed funds. Now, to conclude this level, how rich are you gonna become by investing passively in ETFs? Well, you can definitely retire comfortably. You can even retire a millionaire, either by starting really early in life or by having a really high income to fuel your investments. But it's not like you're gonna have $10 million anytime soon. If you wanna calculate how much money you can make with passive investing, you're welcome to download my free compound interest calculator through this QR code or with the link in the description below. Let's say for example that your goal is to make $1 million. You write 1 million here and then you need to write your initial capital today, the rate of return that you expect to have per year, which by investing in the whole American stock market should be around 9%, and the amount of money that you're gonna be able to invest every month. The table is gonna tell you how many years you're gonna to need to get to 1 million and also show you your wealth every year and how much you had to invest from your own pockets for it. Notice that because of the beauty of compound interest, the longer you invest, the higher your wealth compared to the money you had to invest. But let's move now to level six, which is the passive stock picker, namely the stock picker that buys and holds. I know many of you will want to remark that index investing is for most people the best and safest way to become wealthy. And in fact, I also believe it's true. The list is not about the probability of becoming wealthy though. It's about the amount of wealth that you can achieve and there is no doubt that whatever manages to become a successful passive stock picker is gonna achieve greater wealth than an index fund investor. How many people actually manage to become successful passive stock pickers, that's a different story. Nearly 90% of hedge fund managers fail to beat their benchmark indices. And this should remind us that getting to this level is quite a challenge. And we're probably quite arrogant if we believe that we can do better than 90% of American hedge funds. Now, passive stock pickers follow strict investing principles, have a deep knowledge of finance, and never invest in a company if they are not 99% sure that the company is either underpriced or its future potential is underpriced. They can read financial statements as if they were fables for kids, know how to calculate a discounted cash flow of a company to get to its intrinsic value, and have a lot 
a lot of patience. The funnel tier is the entrepreneur, which is the funnel form of investor, and it's a type of person that understands that only by creating a company, you're gonna be able to achieve the greatest riches. Even Warren Buffett himself, if he made exactly the same investments that he makes with Berkshire Hathaway, but as a private person, would have never achieved such wealth. So there are many reasons for this beside the classical tax advantage of a corporation. By creating a successful company, your net worth is directly related to the market value of the company, which in turn is much higher than the real earnings that the company brings in because you consider the future potential through a multiple. Moreover, you can leverage other aspects, for example, other people's money, time, and talents. Companies have employees that contribute to the growth of the company that ultimately makes the net worth of the owner grow. A successful company also attracts more money Money from investors. Take for instance Berkshire Hathaway from Warren Buffett. So you're going to be able to amplify your gains thanks to money that doesn't really belong to you. Now in this level I also count sophisticated investors that don't simply invest in a stock market but instead diversify with real estate and other assets. But since it makes a lot of sense to do this for a corporation and not as a private, I'm including them here because they are indeed entrepreneurs. But now let's get to you. I'd love to know which level of investor you are and which level you aspire to become in your life. So let me know in the comment section below and if you still haven't done it don't forget to check out my channel and subscribe if you find any value in it. I wish you a great day everyone and as always I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!